Hey everyone, welcome back to another optimization practice problem here. Uh, this problem here is pretty involved, right? It's There's a lot of things to it. Uh, it can be a little bit tedious in some places, uh, but it has a lot of important subtleties that I'd like you guys to be aware of. Right? Uh, once again, please don't memorize the problem. Just instead focus on how we're applying those same steps we learned to this problem as well, and some of the maybe the little um, subtleties that occur uh, in this particular as a result of the way the problem is structured. Okay. All right. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So, so we're given two inches of thread, right? So we have two inches of thread and we can do one of three things with them, with it. So we can either use it to make a circle, we can use it to make an isosceles right triangle, or we can cut it into two pieces and make one of each. So let's draw what this situation would look like. So we have this, this um, thread here, right? So it's two inches, right? So there's three cases. So one, we could just make a circle. Two, could make an isosceles right triangle, which in case you forgot your geometry, just means that these two sides have the same length, right? The non-hypotenuse legs, the legs both are the same length. And the last one is we cut the wire and into two pieces. They don't have to be equal pieces. And we make one of each shape, right? That's not a good triangle. Right? Maybe that looks a little better. Okay, so we can do that. So these are the three different cases we could we could go with, right? And now we're being asked um, as a part. Of, now the the question here is we're being asked to see which of these situations will give us maximum area. Okay, so let's look and see if we can figure that out. The first step, as always, is going to be to find our goal. Again, the goal is really important in helping us stay grounded in reality and making sure we're actually answering what the problem is asking for. Right, so our goal in this case is going to be to maximize maximize area. Okay, we're going to maximize area. Um, so our second step is going to be to get an equation, right? That kind of helps us um, find our goal. So we're going to find an equation right, that helps us achieve that goal. So let's go to this third case here, and we're going to put some. So the reason we're using the third case is just because it's slightly more general, um, and these two cases are kind of included as a are, will kind of be like this. If one of these is in fact the solution, will be kind of embedded into that. So that's why we're looking at this one specifically. So let's get some 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 variables in there so we can make an equation. So the first thing that's really helpful is this radius r for the circle, right? That's a very helpful parameter to us. The next thing that's very helpful in this triangle is this side length s, right? So this is the same, this is also the same, right? So these two things are going to be the same. So we can use and we can use that to get some stuff done. So our equation though is asking for area. So let's find the area of each of these shapes. So the area of the circle is going to be pi r squared. Okay. The area of this triangle is going to be one half s squared. Where that comes from is one half base times height, and since the base and the height are this are both s, it's just s squared. Okay, so our total area, okay, is going to be the sum of the area of the circle plus the area of the tri triangle, which gives us pi r squared plus one half s squared. Great. Now, however. The issue with that is that's an equation of two variables, right? So we can't really do any calculus just yet with that guy. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to somehow convert that into an equation of one variable, which just happens to be our third step. Okay, an equation of one variable, right? And how we usually do this is we do this using what we call a constraint. This is a little extra piece of information that sort of restricts us, which helps us get a little more focus and get uh, more specific solutions. Right? So let's see if we can find where our, so our, 
let's see if we can find what our constraint will be here. So notice, right, that we only have a finite amount of thread with which to make these two shapes, right? So even if I, if I cut this up, I'm going to have only a finite amount of thread for each of these shapes. So I don't know exactly how much I'm using for each shape, but I do know that the total perimeter of each of these shapes has to be two. It has to be two inches, right? So the parameter of the circle plus the parameter of the triangle both have to equal, the sum of those has to equal two inches. So the equation for perimeter of a circle is simply 2 pi r, or the circumference is the other word we, we use for that, uh, plus the perimeter of the triangle, which is going to be slightly trickier, but um, it's where we have this side, this side, we know those lengths. The length of this third set is going to be s root 2. So we're going to have 2s plus s root 2. And the way we get that is from, from trigonometry and things like that. You might want to revisit your, your, um, your trig on that. But that's basically how we get that. And we set this equal to 2. Okay. Now from here, that's our con so this right here is our constraint, right? It's what it's the sort of limiting thing that lets us sort of uh, get to a more specific solution. And now we can solve this equation for one of our variables and then plug that in here, and that's how we'll get our equation of one variable. Okay. So I'm gonna solve this for r actually. So uh, the first thing though I want to read, I want to factor out an s from both of these. So here's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to say 2 pi r plus s, since it's just an s to the first power, this is just going to be 2 plus 2 pi, or sorry, s 2 plus root 2, my apologies, not 2 pi, s plus root 2 equals 2, right? And now I can subtract this thing over to that side and divide by 2 pi. So I'm going to get r equals 2 minus s 2 plus root 2, which is going to be, and divide that by 2 pi. That's my answer. Okay. And now all I need to do is plug this guy in for r over there, and that's my equation of one variable. So let's see what that ends up being. So my a total, it's not just a total anymore, but it's a total as a function of one variable. And as a function of s now, is going to be equal to pi times that guy right there, which is going to be 2 minus s 2 plus root 2 over 2 pi squared plus 1 half S squared. Okay, so now that we have this, uh, we're going to do a little bit of simplifying, right? So, for the new, I'm going to foil this out because that'll make life a little bit easier for us later on. Um, so the, the one over two pi is just we just square the denominator as normal. For the top, we're going to use the a minus b squared identity, which is a squared plus b squared minus two a b. So what we end up getting here, um, let's continue in pink. So that's going to be pi times, so we still have, we're going to have a 4 pi squared in the denominator now. So this is going to be, so we're going to have 4, which is a squared, plus s squared. And remember, 2 plus root 2 is just a constant. So we're going to treat it as just a constant. So it's going to be 2 plus root 2 squared times s squared minus uh, maybe we might need a little more space here so this was going to be uh, minus 2 times 2 which is going to be 4 s 2 plus root 2 okay great the next thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to split this up split the fraction up into several discrete fractions uh, and of course the pi and the pi squared that, that cancel so we're just going to be left with 4 over 4 pi plus s squared 2 plus root 2 squared over 4 pi minus 4s 2 plus root 2 
over 4 pi. Now, these 2 plus root 2 terms might be a little bit scary to think about, but again, it's just a constant. So let's just treat it as a number. Don't need to foil it out. No need to simplify anything else. Just leave it as it is. Just treat it like a number. Okay. And then onto this, we're going to add on the 1 half s squared from earlier. Okay. And now we're going to go ahead to our next step, which is going to be to, um, to find our extreme values. And we know for a fact that this is going to be, a, we're looking for a max. If we look back to our goal, we remember that we're maximizing, so we're looking for a max. Okay. So here's how we, we do that. So our first step is always, as always, is going to be to find our critical points, right? So we're going to, uh, we're looking for those critical points. So we're going to take our first derivative. Okay. So if we switch to pink, uh, we'd have a tot prime of s, which is going to be, um, so this is going to go to zero, so we're left with uh, 2s, 2 plus root 2 squared. Again, this is just a constant, so we don't need to touch it when we're taking derivatives, right? We just leave it as it is, over 4 pi, okay? Minus just 4 times 2 plus root 2 over 4, uh, plus 1 half s squared. Derivative of that is just going to be s. Okay, and We're setting this guy equal to 0. Okay. So now, once again, so this can, again, look very intimidating to deal with. Oh, we have got a pi over there. Yeah. So this can look very intimidating to deal with, but let's just do a few things first. So first, let's cancel out uh, some, let's cancel out a few things. So this 4 and this 4 go away. This 2 and this 4 cancel so we're just left with the 2 pi in the in the denominator and then here's what we're going to do next notice that we have an s to the first here we also have an s to the first over here so we're going to we're going to factor that out and combine the like and we're going to factor that out combine like terms there and we're going to push this guy over to that side so two steps at once here so we're going to push this guy over to that side then we're going to factor out an s okay stay with me on this so we'll have an s, 2 plus root 2 squared over 2 pi, plus 1, right? Because we have that and that. And this is all going to be equal to 2 plus root 2 over pi. Okay. And now we just solve for s. So we're just going to, I'm just going to divide by this quantity down here, which is a horribly nasty number. So we'll be left with s equals, so s is going to equal 2 plus root 2 over pi times 1 over this thing. So 1 over 2 plus root 2 squared over 2 pi plus 1 and that's your critical point, right? Nasty number if there ever was one, but that's your critical point. Right? So the next step we're going to do is we're going to we're going to use our derivative test to figure out um, to uh, to figure out if that's a max or not, right? I'm actually going to still use a second derivative test, right? I'm still going to use a second derivative test. Because it's actually going to turn out quite nice, right? You might think, well, plugging that into a second derivative is going to be awful, and but stick with me. It's actually going to turn out quite nicely. So if we look back up here, remember the only terms with an s in them are this one and this one, and they're both s to the first power. So the derivative is just going to make the s's go away, and we're left with the accompanying constants, right? And this constant here just goes away as well. So using power rule, derivative of this is going to be just uh, a double prime of of s is going to be going back up here. It's going to be two plus root two squared divided by two pi. Okay. This constant goes away, like we said, and plus one. 
there's no there's no s in that so you don't even need to plug in anything all i need to know is the sign of this expression and i'm good to and my second derivative test is done so i don't even need to plug in that very ugly critical point anywhere to evaluate so that's really nice okay so this quantity all of these numbers are positive so this quantity is going to be greater than zero right again i don't even care what exactly that comes out to no need to simplify i know that it's positive so this tells me that i have a min at whatever that critical point is, okay? That's a problem, isn't it? Because again, if you look back up here, we're looking for a max. That's what our goal says, we're looking for a max. So that's a problem, right? So this is a problem for us. So now this is where we're gonna have to call in a little uh, emergency step, so to say, step 4.1. And that is we're gonna have to consider the endpoints. And this, if you remember, is something from our topic, our chapter on absolute extrema, right? So we're going to have to consider this as an absolute extreme value problem and use that uh, to sort of uh, to help us out here. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and see what we can do. So again, we want to consider. So for to, to look at our endpoints, we have to consider our domain, right? We have to consider our domain. So we're gonna have to look at uh, we're gonna have to look at what's the smallest value of s, and we have to look at what's the largest value of s. That should also be smallest possible value of s, right? So smallest possible value of s, largest possible value of s. Okay. So let's see what these two things come out to. So the smallest possible value of s is just gonna be zero, right? Because we could potentially, um, if we look back up here to our original equation with two variables, that would just mean that we're putting all our string into the circle. The other option is a little bit more, more interesting, and that is if, so this happens when we put all our uh, rope into the string. This would happen if we put all our rope into the square. The largest possible value of s would happen if we put all our, all our string into the square. So if we look back, oops, if we look back up here to our constraint equation, right? You remember that 2 pi r plus 2s, if we, let's grab that guy and come down here. You remember that um, 2 pi r plus 2s plus s root 2 equals, has to equal 2. So in this particular case, for the largest possible value of s, we're saying that this, we're saying that r equals 0, right? We're saying that r equals zero because we're using all of our string for the for the triangle. So we're gonna have 2s plus s root two equals two. Factor out an s, two plus root two equals two, and s is gonna equal uh, two over two plus root two. And that would be the largest possible value of s, two over two plus root two. And this, of course, occurs when r equals 0, or we're putting all our string into the triangle. Okay? Cool. So we've, we've set up our domain. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to test our endpoints. Right? So we're going to come down here. And we're going to test endpoints. Right? So we're going to I'm gonna have our little table here, if you remember. We're going to have s and we're going to have a total of s. So we're going to have to plug. We're, we're not really interested in our critical point anymore because we know we have a minimum there. So the only two contenders really are going to be 0 and 2 plus 2 over 2 plus root 2. So we're going to plug each of these into our original function, see what we get, and go from there. Okay. So our original function, our function for a tot of s, if you realize, if you remember, is going to be this guy over here. Let's just copy this and bring it down here. Okay. So we have that down there. So that's our that's our formula for for a tot of s. This is going to be a as a function of s. Okay. So if I plug in zero into this plug in zero, 
If I plug in 0, then this thing is going to go to 0. So I'll have the 4 plus 4 pi. But this thing will go to 0. And this thing will also go to 0. That thing will also go to 0. Because I'm plugging in 0 for all those s's. So I'm just left with 4 over 4 pi, which is just going to be the same thing as the 4 is cancelled. So we're left with 1 over pi. Great. So now I'm going to test the other point of interest, which is going to be this guy, right? 2 over 2 plus root 2. So we're going to do that just a little bit further down here. Just give ourselves some more space. 2 over 2 plus root 2. Right? So the 4 over 4 pi is still going to stay the same, right? It should be really 1 over pi, but uh, we'll just keep it like this for now. Uh, and now for these, I'm going to do a couple of things, uh, a couple of steps at once, right? So we're going to be squaring this guy. So we're going to have 2 squared, which is 4, over uh, 2 plus root 2 squared. We're not going to simplify that any further. So uh, we're going to have plus 4 over 2 plus root 2, the entire quantity squared, times 2 plus root 2 squared and all this divided by 4 pi okay then minus here okay here again I'm just gonna multiply the 4 times 2 and just say it's gonna be 8 so we're gonna have 8 over 2 plus root 2 times 2 plus root 2 over 4 pi and here once again I'm gonna be squaring this guy for this last step here so we're gonna have plus one half four over um, two plus root two squared. Okay, cool, everything's in place now. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and start canceling some things. So firstly, of course, um, I'm not actually gonna cancel the four and the four pi just yet. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cancel out, as you can see, we have two plus root 2 squared here and a 2 plus root 2 squared here. This one's in the numerator, that one's the denominator, so we can cancel those. Same thing goes here, cancel those, and yeah, and then what we're left with, if we scroll down here, is going to be 4 over 4 pi plus, this all just results in a 4 over 4 pi, so this is going to be an additional 4 over 4 pi minus 8 over 4 pi uh, plus this 4 and this 1 this 2 cancels we're left with the 2 here plus 2 over 2 plus root 2 the whole thing squared right now all of this actually just cancels because 4 plus 4 minus 8 is just a 0 because the 4 plus 4 is 8 so all of this actually just cancels out. So all this just goes to zero. So what we're left with is simply two over two plus root two, the whole thing squared. Yay, that's pretty cool. So now I can go ahead and take this guy and put him into our chart here. So we're gonna have two over two plus root two squared. And now, what well, our last step, what we need to do at the very end, is we need to see which one of these is bigger so we can, um, so we can find our absolute max, right? Our quote-unquote absolute max, so to say. We want to find which one of these is bigger, right? So this is not easy to do, right? This is kind of challenging. So what the best, uh, the most um, easy course of action is to plug both of these into a calculator. You will get this approximately 0.31. And you'll get this is approximately um, 0 0.17, right? So this one's obviously bigger. So yeah, and that's basically the most straightforward course of action you could take. There's more things you could do, like you could try and approximate what this is, approximate what that is, like and try and compare fractions of that. Uh, but that's, again, just cumbersome. But you will reach the same conclusion that this one is, is bigger. So that guy right there, um, let's maybe do that in black. But this guy right here is going to be our absolute max, so to say. Okay. 
So let's go ahead and write out our conclusion. Right. So step number five is going to be our conclusion. So we know, right, that we're going to have our maximum area, our area is going to be maximized when s is equal to zero. Right? It's going to be maximized when s is equal to zero. Okay. However, what does this mean to us? So by remember, the, by, by saying s is equal to zero, we're saying that we're not going to use any of our string for the triangle. Therefore, what we're saying is that for area to be maximized, we need to use all of our all of our thread, sorry, not string, we need to use all of our thread for the circle. So we're going to use all of the thread, all of the thread on the circle to make the circle. To make the circle. Okay? So that's that. If you found this video helpful, please do like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, and check out some other videos. See you next time!